Rub up your engines! Okay, I just don't have the book for a 69 Falcon. I got the whole car here. Now Ford Falcons were an interesting car. It was America's first mass produced, what we Americans call compact car. When these cars first came out, they were $1,380. These were seen as a secondary car. As back in the 60s, America was a male chauvinist country. The husband would drive the luxury either Lincoln or Big Ford to work, and the wife would get a Falcon to go to the grocery store, take the kids to school and back. This is the first American compact car that really made it big. And believe you me, they made it big. They sold over 3.1 million of these things. Now they only made them for 10 years. They stopped making them, 1970, they went from 60 to 70. Although in Australia, they kept upgrading them. As you can see here, that's an Australian Ford Falcon. One of the last models they made. Totally modernized car. So how could Ford afford <laughs> to build these things so cheap? 1300 bucks when they first came out because these were the beginning of modern cars. They are unibody construction. There is not a solid frame that the body bolts on. It is unibody construction. And with the lighter weight, they get a little bit better gas mileage, but they do a phenomenal thing. They make them ride and handle better. You get an old full frame vehicle, man, cornering all that weight. This doesn't have the full frame. It's got less weight. And this particular one is an economy version. It's just the six cylinder engine. 200 cubic inch straight six cylinder engine. As time went on, some people had V8s in them. They became muscle cars. A lot of guys that have Ford Falcons today, they have the muscle cars. They build them all up. But this is a rather unique car because it's a 69 and it's only got 97,000 real miles on it, right? Now being a second car in a family, sure it's gonna have low mileage, but I mean, in all those years, that little bit of mileage, this thing sat around a lot. He's probably the third owner of the car. Still in excellent shape, but let me warn you, <laughs> I've seen these things in Rhode Island, and they might take four cars and build one because everything's rotted away, rusted. Ford did not know how to rust proof cars in these days. This is in Tennessee, no big problem here. Texas, you would never have a problem either. But if you're looking to buy one of these used, get under there. And if you see that unibody's all rotten away, don't even think about buying it. Like I said, Still sounds good. I mean, how often you can find an old car like this when the chrome is still in pretty good shape? These are called bench seats because they look like a bench. Now, I owned a Ford Maverick, which was the first Maverick 1970, which was the replacement of this, and it had bench seats too. And when you were cornering fast, man, you'd be sliding here, sliding over there, but at least this one has an automatic transmission, right? No power brakes, no power steering. Let's just say men were real men in those days. You gotta build up those muscles. You gotta get the coordination, shifting on the tree, cornering with no power steering, braking with no power brakes. Somehow, we all made it through alive. Well, most of us did. Now, odds are you'll never find one as nice as this. This isn't one that somebody did over. This is still pretty much a bone stock car. Back in the day, they actually made them quite a bit better than they do today. They didn't know, cause they used enamel paint. They did not use this water-based crap that they use today that fades away. In those days, two-tone was in, so it's two-tone. And check it out, hubcaps, they aren't rusted. They're still in good shape too. The rear bumper, except for this chrome tape, cause it was hit and it chipped off. Otherwise, the chrome plating's still in good shape. And it was for family, so this one's a four door. Hey, plenty of enough room in the back seat here. And of course, this was America. So what's in the back seat? An ashtray, yes, an ashtray. Instead of air conditioning, which this doesn't have, they had these cool windows. Look, this is your air conditioning. You open it up and the air would blow through the car better to cool you off. Now, believe it or not, this car is the precursor to the Mustangs. The Mustangs are basically the same frame. And the Mustangs started out with little bitty sixes, then they went to VH and yada yada. But these inline six cylinder engines can run forever. And I mean forever. This thing's a 69. Maybe it uses a few ounces of oil between changes, you know? One fan belt 
a real fan blade. Oil filter is easy to get to. And here's the fuel pump. That pumps the fuel. Two bolts holding on. Modern cars, where are the engineers with their dastardly minds? Put the fuel pumps inside the gas tank. So on most American cars, you got to pull the tank off to change the pump. And it costs a small fortune. You can change this thing in five minutes, even today. You go to AutoZone and get a fuel pump for this thing for probably 35 bucks. They were very simple, easy to repair vehicles. Everything is easy to access. Look at the room that's inside. There's the fuel filter. Check it out, right there. Oh, really hard to change, you know? The modern cars, the fuel filter is inside the gas tank too. And some of them, it's an integral part of the fuel pump module assembly. Then you gotta replace all that. Instead of just getting yourself a $4 fuel filter, putting it on, away you go. Now, of course, as time went on, then they started to go too cheap. For example, this went for 10 years, then they made Mavericks. They lasted even less period of time. They got too cheap. And of course, anti-pollution equipment had a lot to do with it because in the 70s they started pumping anti-pollution controls and these engines are relatively underpowered to begin with. And when you start putting this anti-pollution equipment on them, pretty much the death knell of these things. Of course, looking back at time, people say, oh, I love to have one. I want to fix one up. But they just faded away from making them too cheap. This, hey, still rolling down the road, you know? Granted, if you were in a place where it rusts, there wouldn't be anything left but a pile of orange rust sitting there. But <laughs> this one didn't, and it shows how well made these things are. We'll start it up. Okay, this is a 69, old as the hill. I've seen brand new cars today that weren't as smooth. It made a lot more noise than this thing did. Which, by the way, most manufacturers have gone away from straight sixes other than BMWs. Although, I tried out that new Mazda CX-90 that's got the inline six, and it was a marvelous car. It was super expensive, too, right? It had all the characteristics of six-cylinder engines. Smoothness will probably last a long time, but it's turboed. This is a 69, so we're talking about what? 54 years old. There's no way I can guarantee you you're ever going to see a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine rolling down the road, never have been taken apart or touched, only oil changes and spark plugs. That's going to be rolling down the road after 52 years. That is not going to happen. They will not hold up. Too much pressure. And of course, let's start looking for plastic parts. Hey, the headlights are glass, they're not plastic. The bumpers made out of metal. This is all metal. Okay, here's some plastic. That's the battery hold on, but it's not the original one. The original one was metal, and when it rusted away, they put a plastic one. Now you can see the shock system is relatively basic. Those are the towers for shock absorbers in the front. And then they got two in the back. It served its purpose to go to the grocery store, to take the kids to school. And really, you could take vacations in it if you wanted, but people would have frowned upon you not taking your big Ford or your big Lincoln on vacation. You had to show people you had money, so this would stay in the garage when you went on vacation. Pass the test of time, but it's just sitting here. So let's take it for a spin. And you can see how this baby still doesn't even have 100,000 miles on it yet. Now, you can't always believe that because these are old cars. They went to 99,999.9. Then they went to zero. Guy across the street from us as a kid, he bought one used. And he thought, oh, gee, it's only got 35,000 miles on it. Turns out it had 235,000 miles on it. And those days, it was worn out. And we're going down and all of a sudden, Boom, on front of the hood. Smoke's coming all over the place. All the hoses were totally rotten with that mileage. Because back in those days, they didn't have synthetic rubber. They had natural rubber. It only lasted so long. They all blew, and then he found out that it really had 235,000 miles on it. But look, it won't start. And you know why? Because these often wear strange. Watch this. What you do is, you can turn the key. Push this up. Now it starts. That's so people can't steal it. <laughs> and as you can see, it has an overly optimistic speed of 120. Realistically, maybe 94 miles an hour going downhill. Forget 120, but you know, it does have a fuel gauge. And you can see they started to make them somewhat cheaper because it only has an idiot light for the alternator brakes. It doesn't have the gauges the old one does. It does have wiper blades and it has heat. And look what it says, warm or cool. 
Well, let me tell you something. It's only gonna be cool if it's cool outside, because this baby doesn't have air conditioning. <laughs> it's relatively cool versus really hot. And okay, he does have a little cover here, because over all these years, then the sauna black dash is gonna crack a little bit. These were the early plastic dashes. At least they weren't metal. The really old cars had metal ones, which would make a big hole in your head when you hit it, so. No airbags, but the horn still blows. Now, it still has seat belts, but they are what are called lap belts. They only go on your lap. In the driver's body to go crashing into the steering wheel if you do get in an accident, so don't trust these babies all that much. Tight turn, so man, we're gonna be turning this baby. A lot. Uh, good thing it's not a cliff. But you let go, see how that twirls back? Don't put your hands in the middle or you'll lose them. <laughs> it's all but look at this. It's still extremely smooth. These six cylinder engines did have a use. Smooth, not insane horsepower, but on the other hand, they've got decent torque. And it's not a race car, but as you can see, it's still corners, perfectly fine, going around the road. You just have to make sure you turn the wheel enough. <laughs> Whee! Have a little more braking distance because this does have four wheel drum brakes after all. There's no disc brakes on these. If you're gonna buy one of these and you don't care about any kind of collector's value, go ahead and put disc brakes in the front. You don't have to mess with the back, they're fine. But you could put disc brakes in the front. There's many guys that sell kits for that. Get people leeway because you're not going to exactly be racing away from them if you pull in front of them. See, it's pretty smooth. And they had real ticking turn signals. You can hear them. So here we go out in the country. Look at this, I can still drive it with no power steering with a camera in one hand and a steering wheel in the other. Now we're at our drag strip. So, we'll stop and here we go, full blast. Oh my God, this thing is burning rubber. Hey. Don't poo-poo these engines. Look at that. The only traction control these things have are make sure you have tires that still have tread on them so they don't slip. <laughs> oh, you can see they have torque. You want to pass people? Look, you pour it. Speedometer starts speeding up. It's not a slouch. It's not a racing car, but hey, it's going to get you where you're going and then some. And do I hear bearings worn? No. I hear the window because I have the window open. It doesn't have air conditioning. You got to roll the window down, right? <laughs> but if you really wanted, you could actually put air conditioning on this. They have big radiators. They could handle it if you wanted to spend the money. So there you have it, a Ford Falcon. Yeah, it doesn't have disc brakes. It doesn't even have power brakes. You get used to it. And sure, it's got bench seats, but bench seats are very useful for other purposes. And I'm not just talking about sleeping on them. Hey. They were solid built, as long as you didn't live where there's a lot of rust, when they would rust away. That could be fixed by coating them, but they didn't in those days. They were cheap. This is less than $1,300, brand new, right? They get you where you're going and didn't break down. Simpler times for simpler cars. Hey, but I do have to say, looking at this original owner's manual, I guess people were even dumber in those days because they're showing you how to operate the ashtray. <laughs> fascinating bit of American history. When Americans made cars in Detroit, people had jobs, everybody lived in suburbia and was happy, or at least that's how the myth goes. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.